Hi, it's Mark from Surfrock Studios and welcome to another Logic tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the IO plugin found in Logic Stock Utility Folder. Now the IO plugin, or its long name would be the ins and outs plugin, and it allows you to utilize all of those additional ins and outs you may have on your audio interface so you can wire in external processes so they appear in your standard logic track okay um, it's a very very cool plugin and uh, when you initially look at it you might not realize fully what it's there for and its capabilities it's also a little bit fiddly to use sometimes but it's not actually massively difficult so anyone really can do it once they start thinking about it in the right procedure um, you can uh, effectively process your audio through any type of d audio device external whether it be a compressor and proper valve compressor or you may have a tape delay for instance or you may have a spring reverb or you may have guitar pedals that you would just prefer to use in sort of amp designer world um, that uh, and my distortions or wah pedals for instance a lot of people uh, they like to use the, the the software buttons but when it comes to the wah pedal yeah it just sort of struggles unless you've got some kind of continuous controller that allows you to program in or you're drawing in your wah curves with your, your mouse and it's just like why can't you just use a proper wah well the IO plugin is your friend to do that so yeah basically I want to talk you through the IO plugin today and uh, we're gonna start putting a, a distortion pedal um, onto some drums and to some synth sounds etc and see how we can use guitar pedals on synths and mix and match and uh, yeah I thought it would be fun so let's go and create a software instrument um, so I'm going to go over to logic now uh, I'm going to just close my library down and we shall go down to where it says instrument and for the time being I'm just going to do an electric piano sound okay so we've got this uh, stereo instrument that's loaded up and there we go there is the basic piano tone we're going to start with so I want to get this piano tone running out through the IO plugin and running in through this particular guitar pedal I have here now this is a game changer audio plasma coil pedal and it's effectively a distortion family type pedal uh, but how it creates its distortion is in one of those kind of mad scientist crazy ways okay it converts your audio into electricity into high voltage and then sends like lightning through a uh, xenon gas field chew converts that lightning back into audio and uh, then sends the audio signal out there's a couple of octaving kind of tools that would be blended in the octave up and octave down and two octaves down that are in there as well so it creates some very very cool sounds uh, and because of the way it works and the the fact that it converts to electricity you get this kind of either on or off state is kind of like gated but it's all at the same time that distortion is being created so yes we can use distortions and yes we can use gates in logic to recreate something that's very similar but they would be in a chain where here everything is merged on top of each other so I thought this would be quite a cool pedal to utilize to try and see if we can make some crazy synth sounds or uh, degraded drum sounds etc so um yeah We've got our piano tone. Now we need to start looking at how we can uh, route our signal through this pedal, okay? Now we're gonna encounter a few problems along the way. Uh, and I wanna talk you through signal sort of types, i.e. line and instrument, make sure you've got those right. External boxes that make sure you convert signals correctly so your external boxes can receive what they need to receive. And we're also going to experience how the IO plugin works in stereo and in mono worlds. OK, so first of all, I'm going to show you the stereo world and I'm going to show you ways that you can send it through the pedal um, and uh, make it work. But uh, it's not the way I actually want to use it. So I'm going to show you that first just very, very quickly. So the IO plugin, we go over to our audio effects slot and we go down to utility, we go to IO and we only have a stereo mode here. And the reason why we only have a stereo mode is because the uh, software instrument channel strip that has opened is a stereo channel. OK, so because it's a stereo channel, you only get a stereo option. And in the stereo option, you have all the same kind of features that you do at the top, but there's at the bottom, we have this format of stereo or mid side. In the mono mode, that doesn't work. But let's go and take a look at what we have. We have output volume, so that allows you to boost your logic made signal out of your audio interface of um, 
socket or output of choice and then we have our output of choice here now because it's a stereo option it's going to work in pairs um, and uh, to remind you I'm going through this pedal which is going to be mono so I'm I'm using the output on three on my uh, Focusrite Sapphire Pro 40 uh, and then eventually ending up here so I'm using output three not output three and four so this is going to cause me a little bit of a problem I'll show you a way of solving that as well but we'll choose three and four for the time being then it's going to be going through uh, and then coming back eventually to input three. So that's going to keep it nice and safe there. And then we have an input sort of cut and boost. So you can match your levels on the outgoing and the incoming, which is all cool. All right. Then underneath we have our latency detection and our latency offset. Um, now that is something that we can use just to simply push the ping button it will send a little blip through the audio chain and it will give you a reading and then it will it will make some variations on how it offsets those things now it all depends on the kind of processing you have on your machine the processing you have on your external processor um, whether there is latency that is being caused and sometimes that latency ping that you send at one time can change a moment later now if you're finding that is really not working for you and then you are simply going to have to do some adjustments manually later. I actually prefer to do my adjustments manually later um, because with this particular setup that I'm running right now, I experience a variable quantity of latency. So um, yeah, that can simply just be ping and there's a little ping that goes through and currently it's working at a plus 36 sample delay. Okay, so um, I'm gonna leave it that, it doesn't matter at the minute, how that's going to affect me in a moment I'm going to alter manually but then we go on and we've got the wet and dry so when we are sending through the chain we can also have the direct internal logic and then it recompile and that latency offset will also match how those two things are blended back together um, so yeah currently we are running through this plasma coil pedal. Now, there's one little box that I am having to use um, to make sure that the signal coming from my audio interface and going into the plasma coil is correct for the plasma coil. And that's basically the fact that your audio interface is gonna be chucking out a line level signal. Now, a line level signal is very loud, okay? It's very good, very loud, perfect for sending over long distances. And uh, yeah, we need to make sure that uh, this pedal is expecting an instrument level signal. So we need to make sure we convert that line level signal down to instrument. And the way we can do that is basically use a box which is effectively like a reverse DI or otherwise known as a reamp box. DI boxes convert your uh, instrument level to line level and um, they tend not to want to work backwards. Some do. Um, some do say that they do but don't do it very well. But um, yeah. A DI box, in my opinion, goes one way. It goes from the instrument level to line level. So if you want to be using the reverse option, you need a dedicated box, in my opinion, and go for a reamp box. Now, they're not particularly expensive, they can be, but they don't have to be. The one I've got is the uh, the Palmer Decapo Reamp box. It's a passive box, doesn't break the bank, uh, works just fine for what I want to do with it. So um, currently output three at line level is going into my Reamp box. My Reamp box is changing from line level to instrument. And then I'm just ra running some standard guitar cables from the Reamp box into the plasma coil and then from the plasma coil I'm returning back into my input three on my audio interface okay so there's the loop we already know it's working through uh, it sent the ping through it's 36 degrees or 36 samples okay so um, we are on a stereo instrument running the IO plugin on pairs three and four but only three is connected so it theoretically means that only the left channel is working so although my plasma coil is not engaged it's in bypass mode when i now play that piano tone we're only hearing it on the left hand channel so um if you're using a stereo track and you're only want to want a mono thing you're going to have a few issues now there is a very uh quickish way it's quickish it's not quick uh quickish way to solve that um on auxiliary channels and on audio channels up by the input mode you get uh, a, a channel mode okay which allows you to switch between stereo or mono but on instrument channels you don't okay so we have to kind of falsify that a little bit by converting the signal running after the sound creating module, i.e. the electric piano module at this moment in time, 
convert it from stereo into mono. Um, you could just leave it as it is, but we might notice something if I turn the IO plugin off. If I hit the low notes, they are more louder, bad English, they're louder on the left and the, uh, the high notes are loud on the right. So there is a stereo image there. So we are going to, if we just ignore that, we're going to have the higher notes going to be quieter when we're only running on channel three. So if we want to flatten everything off and even it, we have to mono sum it. And the plugin for using mono sum it in Logic is the gain plugin. Okay, so I'm simply going to go in and move the IO plugin down a slot, just drag it down, and then I'm going to create a new utility and gain plugin, go for the stereo mode, and I'm just going to click mono. Now that means it's mono summed the stereo image of the output of the electric module, electric piano module, made sure that both the left and right sides are now even, which are then going into the IO plugin. So now in this scenario, when I turn the IO plugin, the high notes and the low notes will be evenly uh, volumized into the plasma coil. But of course, now we have the return coming back, which is on input three and not four. So we are still hard pan to the left. So the simple way to do that is just to alt copy your gain plugin and stick another version of it underneath the IO. So now we have it all running through and it's in mono all the way through, even though we are theoretically still running on a stereo track. OK, so um, there we go. That's one way we can start to use it. Now, we might notice if I turn the uh, the IO plugin off, that the volume of the non IO plugin to the IO plugin is not even. OK, so the signal running through the uh, the long chain in the external real world is actually a lot quieter. So we can go in and use the uh, IO's uh, output volume and input volumes to kind of match how you want it. Now, I'm not going to do it too um, close for comfort, uh, but here we go. There's one. Still louder a little bit there, isn't it? So let's just notch it a little bit more. That'll do. All right. So uh, it's fairly even for what I want to do. It's going to work fine. All right. So we now have our instrument, which is now running through the plasma coil. And if I turn that plasma coil on, it's going to start processing the signal. And I can use the plasma coils on. I can use the uh, dry wet mode that we have down here to introduce the original dry signal and blend the two together. So I think that's a very, very cool little uh, set of features that we've got there. But that's not the way that I really want to use it today. I don't want to be using the two gain plugins. And um, it also means that uh, I'm kind of stuck with uh, the IO plugin working in the instrument. Now, there are things that will happen. Those those uh, IOs that we have on the back of our interface can be rerouted from other things as well. Um, but I'm just going to one, run one instance of the IO if I am using only one device. I don't want to have multiple processes of the uh, or versions or copies images of that plugin running multiple times because that's going to take up more and more and more CPU and processing uh, bandwidth. So I just want the one. So the way that I'm going to do this and the way that I am going to uh, start using this piano tone a little bit differently, just going to remove those three plugins we were running before and I'm going to show you a different way. So we're back to our standard stereo piano image right now and uh, the Another way to do that, to convert this instrument into mono, is to send the output of this channel strip to an auxiliary channel, okay? So what we can do is we can go down to stereo out, we can go to bus, and I'm gonna go to bus 31, all right? So instantly on the right-hand side here, it's created the auxiliary channel for me, and uh, we have already set up with bus 31, and just to the left, we have the channel mode selection, which is currently working with two circles, which means it's in stereo. So if we click that, we suddenly have a mono channel. So this is automatically summing both left and right into a singular central feed of mono, okay? So we play that now, we hear a mono electric piano. So now in the audio effects uh, slots that we have there, we can run the IO plugin as we did before, but this time it only gives us the mono option. So this is going to work much more accurately for what I want to try and do. 
And because we don't have any outputs and the IO is plugged in, you see it's just cutting off the signal. So I can go to output and now I have the singular outputs and inputs in the drop down menus, okay? So now, turn the plasma off. We have our piano tone. Okay, so we can set those levels as we need. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a boost here and here. Turn it off. Sounds about right to me. Um, of course, we can then do our little ping. And we are going to find... We don't have any delay. Oh, it's because I haven't turned it on. There we go. That'd be nice. Turn it on and we get our ping. There we go. 36 samples again positive all right i've got my dry and wet there but notice how at the bottom we don't have our stereo or our mid side options anymore okay so in mono that is where that is going to work and this is how we're going to use the pedal the uh, the pedal and the sounds today all right so i've got my electric piano going and i have my processing when i turn it on okay so i'm going to put down just a very very simple little uh take um uh, we just hide the in fact i'll keep it up there okay um just going to put down a very simple little piano part and we can see how we can then manipulate the sound using the pedal all right so let's turn the pedal off for the time being and we'll go for in fact it'd be nice if i had a click there we do three four Okay, quantize that up and we have our piano part now of course this is still running through a bypass plasma coil pedal I turn it on and we get the drive now I can manipulate the voltage here and I can go from really broken up bitty crushed gated type fuzzy distortion and degraded all the way through horrible nastiness okay now obviously the current, the, the plasma coil is very much a uh, specific type of effect, okay? You're not going to use it on everything and when you're trying to create something that's very sort of dirty, I wouldn't necessarily go for that full sound if I was trying to go for a slightly broken piano tone. Um, I can vary the dry wet after I've recorded everything as well so I can get it exactly how I want it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to just pause there with this piano take, okay? And uh, we are going to start looking at some drums and see how we can use the same kind of pedal on some drums, which could be kind of cool. So we've already got this kind of track set up. It uh, theoretically has on the instrument track just the module that's making the instrument sound and then it's got the output set. So rather than having to go through and make everything again, I can just duplicate that track. So let's do that. There we go. Now I'm going to do some drums here. OK, now I'm going to use doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to go and use Ultra B. OK, so I'm going to go down to Ultra B and I'm going to hit stereo. And uh, what we have now, I'm going to mute the old piano sound. Uh, what we have now is our uh, piano tone. Uh, sorry, our drum sound is now going to be routed automatically off to bus 31, which has the IO on it. So it's already set up for me. So there's our drum tone, all right? So I'm just gonna close it down. I'm using simple stock software instruments with their default patches, okay? So let's go and stick the click back on and let's put some drums on, so. All right. Oh. I don't like that one in there. Which one was that out? That one. Uh, should be about there. In fact, I think maybe I might just go for another take. But there we go. See? It's real, okay? That's more what I wanted to hear. Cool, right. 
So we've got an, a part, a sort of performance that I kind of like the sound of. Now, of course, this is still the sound we're hearing is being converted to mono because that's how we set the auxiliary up. We don't have to do that all again. And it's running through the plasma coil. So now let's go and put the plasma coil and see how we can get these drum tones to be some degraded, horrible mess. OK, so here we go. Let's turn that voltage down. That's kind of getting where I wanted. Okay, now what's kind of cool about the plasma coil is that it has some octaving kind of tools in. So I'm going to stick in a, a blended octave underneath, okay, and we'll just engage that mode. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, and we could go through and we could simply start sort of building a sound how we want it just by going through the settings on the pedal. high octave down octave up and double octave down and octave up i'm going to go back to the single octave underneath kind of like that okay yeah there we go all right so we've got a sound that i like now earlier we recorded that piano tone okay now i don't think maybe that piano tone and this drum beat will go together but ultimately we could blend them together um and we have two separate instruments which are both being summed in mono onto a singular auxiliary track which is then having the routing going through the plasma coil pedal so obviously when you start having effects like compression and stuff and what well anything really when you have uh some sort of a ratio you're going to have the sound going in. it's going to push something else down if it's going to affect the other thing everything that's in there is going to be affected at once so if you have something that's loud and something that's quiet this is going to happen like this so you know you're going to have to start to glue things together at some point in the way that it's working so let's go and see how the original piano take blends in with this drum thing it might not sound cool probably not so I instantly know it doesn't sound cool. So maybe we could go through and we could change this piano track, okay? And uh, we could add something in the piano take that might be beneficial to the drum thing, okay? So we've got some notes that are happening in here. And if I go onto there, we've got the kind of piano tone, which is now that horrible tone, right? It's kind of cool. So let's go and put something in like that. Two, three, four. Okay, there we go. I think that's kind of funky. Cool. So, interacting in different ways, creating some kind of weird sound. Now, all of that without the plasma coil. Dodgy note in there. There we go. Plasma coil. On. There we go. It's kind of, you know, obviously the kind of music I'm making there might not be everybody's taste, but ultimately it's showing you that you can start to have a lot of fun with external processors on your audio. And you could be using uh, the IO plugin in your, um, your amp designer rig, like I mentioned earlier, for a while or a proper distortion that you'll want to start using. And then you can, of course, you can automate it as well. So you can have those uh, uh, IOs going on and off uh, to get your external pedals working so you could almost uh, fake a switching unit for instance but yeah there we go so that is that now of course currently at this moment in time we uh have not got this uh rendered into an audio file and uh, we have a couple of issues when we start doing that uh, basically when you uh, want to render an audio file normally what you might do is use bounce in place now bounce in place works in like super quick time it just goes done all right um, and we need everything to be done in real time otherwise the pedal external or the processor external won't know what to be doing okay so there is uh, there's two ways you can go about it and they both in my opinion output exactly the same kind of issues um, and they there's no real benefits to either of them uh, though personally I prefer to render stuff in 
as if it was an instrument. OK, so you could go into file. Uh, or sorry, sorry, First of all, you'd have to solo up because if you've got a load of instruments there, you don't want everything else being rendered in this take. So you solo the stuff that you actually want to hear. Uh, and then you'd go to uh, bounce and project selection and you'd have to make sure that you bounce in real time. OK, that is the only place where you can use a bounce feature that is in real time. And depending on what your latency offset is done, it will start to move things around a bit. But I have uh, I think I mentioned earlier that uh, the latency offset might be a little bit fluid and it might move and you're going to need to fix it later. Now, if I render it here, it will just sort of go out, create a stereo file and uh, then it will uh, uh, I'll need to import that in. And if we're only using a mono file, then you kind of got double the data. So um, I'm going to do this as an instrument and show you how to do that. Now, hopefully what I'm about to do isn't get too complicated for you. We have our instruments, whether it be piano and drums, which are then summed to an auxiliary track, which is running on mono. And then we're hearing what the output of that auxiliary track is running, which has got the IO plugin. Now, what we need to do is create a new auxiliary track that is sending all of that to. And then we are going to create an audio track that is going to record what that second auxiliary track is doing. Bear with me. OK, so we can take the solo off of there. Now I'm just going to bring my mixer up. OK, so we've got mixer here. And uh, what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the stereo out option on the auxiliary track, which we have here, aux one. And I'm going to change that to bus and I'm going to go to bus 32. OK, and there it is. It's there. All right. So auxiliary true two is now listening to bus 32. So we've got our Instruments being summed to a mono track on 31, going to the I.O. And if uh, you were running stereo effects after there, then uh, you'd want to keep your uh, secondary auxiliary in stereo. Um, and then the other uh, bounce option project, etc., might work for you. But if you wanted to do mono, then we might as well just change bus 32 to being mono as well. Now, that's all summed through. So when I play through, we can see how the instruments running into AUX1 and then being sent through onto AUX2, which is where we can now hear it. So now we need to create a mono audio track, which we then capture what the output of AUX2 or bus 32 is doing. OK, so we go up to our new instrument. We add an audio and we're going to go down to bus. I'm going to go to bus 32. So we create that. And there it is. Let's put it underneath so it's all nice and tidy. So this is uh, instrument bounce, OK, of the plasma coil. All right, cool. So we need to do one more thing where we just change the channel mode to a mono on the new audio track. And there we go. All we simply need to do now is hit record. And what it will do is it will play those piano and drums things out go through the plasma coil, go back into audio uh, input three, and then it will go through the various bus modes and get captured onto the instrument bounce plasma coil audio track. So let's do it. We've got the uh, the, the um, uh, click off at both. In this particular mode, the click isn't recorded. If you have the click on in the bounce project mode, it does get recorded, okay? So let's go and record that. I think everything is ready. So let's go. Yes. We've got a cycle on here. Let's just solo that up and check it out. Let's go and take a look in close detail. We did set the latency sample rate and I said we have to fix it later. So uh, let's go and take a look at it. All right. So I'm just going to close this down, make a little bit of space. And we are looking at quite a zoomed in option there, but we can instantly see right at the beginning that that audio wave is quite far behind the zero point of the region. OK, so um, yeah, we're going to need to fix that because if you start having all your uh, software instruments working in real time and being perfectly up with your piano roll sort of uh, up to zero point of your region and then suddenly when you bounce it, everything's behind. Everything that hasn't got bounced is going to be 
displaced, okay? So I think it's probably a good idea at this, this point for us to nudge that all up so everything is perfect, okay? So the way we can fix this, we can change this anchor point and just move that, and I'm gonna do it very, very roughly, okay? Down to there. So now the zero point of our region has that audio wave right knee up to the top. And if we go through to the end of the pattern, we can see that it has beautifully extended it on as well. So that's, I'm pretty cool with that. We've got a little bit of over capture as well. So let's just hear that. Cool, there we go. So we have our instrument working beautifully. Now, one thing that I did notice when I hit listen to that back, There is a little bit of sort of a chorusing effect happening. And even though we have the instrument bounce plasma coil track soloed, it hasn't muted the, uh, the other tracks in the right part of the chain. So the audio that's going through the IO stage is still happening a little bit. So um, yeah, you may now need to go through and start making sure that once it's processed that you have to turn off your IO settings on those, uh, that plugin or the IO plugin so you don't get any coursing. So everything runs through nice and neat and just is silent, okay? chorusing anymore. Right. But that is the IO plugin. That's how you can use it. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, you can use it for compression, for full processing. Uh, you can use it as a wet dry kind of thing, which might be good for reverbs and stuff like that. Uh, tape delays, real tape delays, real world things. It's very, very cool. And of course, you can automate everything that's in there as well. Not the uh, IOs, etc., but maybe the, the, the blending and the turning on and off of the actual IO plugin routing. So you can do some very, very cool things. Just make sure that when you render it, that you render it appropriately. Um, I find that the latency settings in the IO plugin are a little bit sort of, uh, it gives you a rough guide, uh, but nothing better in my opinion than going through and making sure 100% that it is exactly where it needs to be. Otherwise everything gets a little bit messy. Okay, especially if you're multi-tracking things. So there we go, the IO plugin. That's it. I've been Mark, Saffrock Studios. We have a load more uh, Logic tutorials on our YouTube channel. Uh, so please subscribe. Please leave a comment in the comments section below. Like I say, I've been Mark, Saffrock Studios. See you later.